Hey, is my sound working? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Do I have loud noises coming in? No, you're fine. Are you riding with Whit somewhere? Yes. Okay. And I'll, I'll mute myself, but then I guess. How many people are going to be on here? Um, me, you, Marnie, and Jeannie. I just texted Jeannie. Uh, she may be waiting until exactly 45. I don't know. 
Marty, Check I'm one, two. <laughs> Marty, you know how these um how these things go. You do these assignments for EDS. So um I'm gonna mostly talk and get us through this quick, but any like a comment here or there would be helpful, but you don't have to. But I, there, I'll be showing things that you're very familiar with, but um, just act like I'm teaching you something. I mean, everything I'm showing, all y'all are real familiar with. Okay. How many comments do you want me to make? Just a couple, three, four, I don't know. You can make as many yeah. as you want. And Amanda might hang up on this. <laughs> She's riding in a big truck. We're gonna to get to see some motion while she's there. We're waiting on Jeannie and then and then I'll start. <clears throat> this stuff's kind of rough, you know, when they're mini masters and you have to have so much so fast. It's six minutes for Jeannie if y'all wanna go get something to drink or I guess she's waiting until the 345 time. I can't get up and down good. Um, I got kicked in the ribs Saturday and I can barely move. Were you doing Cobra Kai stuff? I was. was your, and your opponent got you? Yeah, I lost uh, my final match eight to four. I was very disappointed. And now I got, I got bruised ribs and a blue, bruised lung. Oh no. Did he play dirty? No, I just didn't block. Oh, okay. Well, I hate that. Yeah, me too. I'm <clears throat> I'd like to have a rematch. And uh, better heal first. I know I it, it'll be a month. I mean I'm even taking off karate for a month. I'm on the DL. It hurt your neck and your rib. No, I got a, I got bruised ribs and a bruised lung. Bruised ribs and a bruised lung. Wow, that's a way up there. I hate myself on camera. <laughs> Tate's almost asleep. He's here in my arms. He's watching Coco Melon. What's his name again? Tate. Tate. You call him Tater Todd, is that right? Yeah. See, he's almost asleep. Oh, baby. I've got mine at Camp Boaz. San Diego is supposed to be, but his. Um, Mama's too sorry to carry him. Really? Um, I was. Mm. She's not going to carry him ever or just didn't today? I guess on the days that uh, he's with her, he ain't going. Hmm. She doesn't carry him anywhere. Does he like Camp Boaz? He doesn't want to go, but he needs to go because he's got some oh, deficits yeah. in language arts he needs to address. Yeah. Okay, here's Jeannie. Jeannie, are you there? I see your name. There you are. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Amanda. Hi. Amanda's in a truck, so we're riding somewhere with her. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> hey, Marty. Hey. I was cutting grass, so I, I might look a little rough. I was trying to cut it before it rains. I'm you look to, pretty. Well, I'm trying to sit where I'm not hunched over, but uh, I got what? a table too pretty. close and I'm in a bar stool, but I'll make it. We'll make oh, it. well, it looks pretty behind you. Oh, thank you. I hope you don't get graded based on the looks of your participants. because I don't, I don't think I'm I looking a little, I'm looking a little rough. Let me fix my hair. <laughs> you know who my instructor is? Dr. Stanley. Yes, she's seen us all this the way. Did you know that, Marty? I didn't know. My instructor for this class is Dr. Shannon Stanley. Is she coming on or is this just being recorded and sent to her? 
being recorded and sent. So what are you talking about? I'm talking about things <laughs> y'all already know things about, uh, mostly. So just make a comment here and there. You're just mostly looking at my already data. Oh, okay. I'm supposed to present my data. Well, if you got something you want me to say, I'll do it scripted. <laughs> You'll think of something. One-liner okay. one here or there. Or, oh, yeah, okay. I, I like that idea of a family report. Or, oh, I don't know if we should send anything to families. However you feel, whatever. Okay, that'd be great. All right. All right. I'm going to share my screen and see how this goes. can share it at a time. All right, there y'all are on the side and move this down so I can hit present. You want us to call you Patricia or Marlene? Don't call me Patricia. I've I'm got all kidding. those names on there. They still have my maiden name. Amanda, where are you going? Amanda. <laughs> Unmute, Amanda. Amanda. To the rock quarry, but it's probably really loud in here because I can barely hear, so that's why I'm going to stay mo muted. Muted. <laughs> muted. Muted. Stay on mute. Yeah, this is your Zoom uh, field trip. I'm going to say All right. Win. I get to see what you and Whit do, huh? Oh, How many okay, kids do y'all have with you? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to start now, if that's okay with y'all. Yes, ma'am, I'll hush. No, oh, you're fine. <laughs> this is an iReady reading data and family report presentation. I am Patricia Marlene Gregory Freeman. We have Marty Hatley, who is a stakeholder in his own right. He had a fifth grader in uh, Boaz Intermediate School last year, but he's also our ELL teacher. We also have Jeannie Prince, a fifth grade language arts teacher with me, and Amanda Duckett, who is our guidance counselor and testing coordinator. Our issues that we have when we look at our data is that we are a high poverty school. We'll look at the demographics in just a minute. And we have a high Hispanic population um, and sometimes there's some cultural barriers, particularly with language and vocabulary that I will talk about. This is our demographics poverty. You can see one, two, three, over the last five years, we've had 70% or higher poverty rate. Um, and these children don't get as many experiences in life as some children do. And we um, can see that sometimes in our testing scores. By race, you can see that Hispanic has continually raised over the last five years. We, we stay at 40, 41% over the last three years. Um, we have some with the black race, excuse me, I went too far, and a few Asian Pacific Islanders. And then we have about 58% in the race of white children. Right. Based on our numbers, based on our numbers, the 21-22 uh, school year looks like that may uh, go up some. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not 43 or 44 percent. With the Hispanic population? Yes, ma'am. Yes, we. I've heard Ms. Hopper say in a state of the school report that we are expecting that to continue to rise. And I've studied cultural things about the whole country to know that they're expecting uh, the Hispanic culture to continue to rise in schools and all over the country. All right, the first example I have is of diagnostic reading information is just to show that if they're in the red, when you look at my individual class reports, they're at risk for tier three, which means they are one level or greater than one level below. Um, actually, it doesn't mean they're one level below. Let me take that back. It means that they are uh, more than one level below. They're two or more grades below level. The yellow section tier two is one grade level below. And if they're in the green, they are uh, 
on or above grade level. And this is just a pyramid that comes with explanations of already. It's not any of our data. All right, this is my window one, the first diagnostic test. And um, it's a little bit hard to see, but I only <clears throat> had six students, which is 13% that were uh, on or above grade level at the first diagnostic. I had 22 students, I'm having a strain, I'm sorry, which was 46% that were one grade level below. And then I had 42% of my students that were two or more grade levels below in reading in our first diagnostic window, looking at the standard view. And um, as you look at the bars, this is phonological awareness, phonics, high frequency words, vocabulary, comprehension of literature and comprehension of informational text. And we are all seeing historically on our historic data through when we had Scantron as our standardized test, um, and then always with already, we're seeing vocabulary as a major weakness. And that's probably due to our poverty and lack of experience and lack of hearing those tier two, tier three words at home sometimes. Um, the language may be difficult for some with our high Hispanic population. But um, if you look for the area of weakness, I only had four in the green in vocabulary at the first window, 17 in the yellow and 25 in the red. So this was my biggest weakness area and informational text was next. Yeah, I guess that um, we can attribute some of only having four in the green for vocabulary is being at a school since March the 13th and uh, a lot of our kids that are Hispanic not being around English as much. Exactly. I agree. And for two students who aren't served in ELL and have tested out, they still have Hispanic parents at home that speak Spanish and they don't hear enough English at home, even though they're getting a lot of language acquisition and they've adapted and learned the language to use at school. There, there's a lot of students that the parents speak only Spanish or at least one parent does is sometimes the case. All right, this is my window three and I celebrate some of the improvements that were shown. I had 23 students that were in the green and that was a raise of course from the four and then I had 17 students which was also about where I wanted to be since my red closed up and my green got higher and then I had nine students in red um, and of those nine students five were shared with Mr. Hatley as ELL and they were very early on into language acquisition. So I was, I was happy with my end of the year results, although there's still areas for improvement. For example, vocabulary, we had a rise from the four to 16, but you can still see in this band that vocabulary is my, the weakness of these students. And we're seeing that, am I not correct, Jeannie, across all the fifth grade classes? Yes, and I think that, um course uh being spaced apart uh not getting to uh talk like we like we have done in the past you know has made it hard for their vocabulary uh, a lot of them and also um not being able to go to the table for small group you know those are all factors that that have really been challenging for this school year exactly yes all right, moving on, uh, our goals and I ready, since it's an online program, we use the diagnostic and I have written this as though it's for stakeholders and parents. I was, it was highly suggested to get other stakeholders beside teachers and Marty, you're my parent line. And then Jeannie, you're my high school parent line and Amanda's my middle school parent line, or I guess hers is going into high school now, but of course those students won't do already, but um, our goals are, and if we're presenting to parents, which I'm going to show you some reports, and I have from this assignment looked at more of the parent and family involvement reports and would like to use them next year because I think that would help our scores if parents knew what the program was about and they were getting 
suggestions of how they could help their children at home. And they knew exactly what their children are doing. So if I was talking to a parent, I would tell them that the online program determines their child's strengths and their areas for growth. I would tell the parent second that it's a diagnostic test. It allows us to meet your child where he or she is and it provides data to inform instruction. And that data is not only informed by the program itself, here we'll cover instruction of how the program meets the children where they are, but we get all kinds of report opportunities to inform our instruction with students where they are and knowing how to put them in groups in a grouping report to work on the skills that they lack in. So that's a really great at, at, um, feature of the iReady program. Then instruction, it provides instruction based on your child's individual strengths and needs in order to reach growth markers that close the gaps of below grade level performance. And we'll look at um, some data here in a minute of individual students. And one didn't grow and reach those growth markers, but we'll talk about how we handled that. And then one of my students did grow. Um, anybody have anything to say about the goals? I'll move on then. All right, here's one of the family reports and I have tried to white out the name and hopefully that has been done. And then on this report, I have blacked out the, the um, names, but this child was below grade level. Um, at the beginning assessment, he was even lower at the mid assessment. And then at the end of the year, he did show some growth but it was not enough to keep him from being two grade levels below the entire year. Um, so with the Literacy Act and the summer program, he was brought up as having a need. So he is working with iReady and Inspire and other programs starting today in summer school. His, his family wanted him to go and uh, he's getting the help he needs. He's not the best test taker, he can show better performance sometimes on classroom work, but still at, at this point, we don't need to see him consistently testing um, two grades below grade level. He performs at grade three and did the entire year. But for this parent report, there's a second sheet that takes the different categories that I read aloud earlier about biological awareness, phonics, and the different comprehension and vocabulary, and it gives, it tells them where he's at and what suggestions can be offered for them to do at home to help him. And then there's also places on the website parents can go for even, for even further help. All right, so trends that we see is we often have a, a percentage of students in each class that are two grades below grade level and sometimes, no matter what we do, and you'll see, I provided the same instruction for the next child we're about to look at, that's a celebration. Uh, no matter what we do, they don't come out of that uh, area that they're in of two grade levels below. So we keep doing everything we can do, and then hopefully this summer program will help. Anybody have any comments on that one? Right. Marlene, do you know if the um, parent report comes in Spanish or not? There are some that come in Spanish. There's, a, there's some that come in several languages. Um, and, I, and I want to explore that further and talk to you about that, Mr. Hatley, um, because there were several. I just don't know if it was the exact one that I pulled for this presentation. But yes, there are some that do. So that I've seen them in Spanish, so I, I can affirm that there are some in Spanish, yes. Okay, good. Do you know if it was the same ones I showed, which is the, oh, one more thing I'd like to say about this report is that this could go home after the first window. I can't show what it would have said after the first window because we, we gave all three tests, and so it shows the beginning, mid, and end of year test, but you could send this home after the first window, after the second window, and it would just show what you have. And then by the time you give the third one and you send it home, the child has taken all three. And then you hope that you start seeing blue bars that look like this, which this child was two grade levels below 
and then he stayed two grade levels below at mid-year and then he rose to just one grade level below and got really close to fifth grade level and he reached his typical growth and stretched growth so this is a celebration and this is what we hope to happen and um, again same instruction same supports were provided for both of the students that I shared the report and um, sometimes it just takes a little more and maybe a little more time for some compared to others. Any comments? Well, the, you know, maybe the parental reports will get the parents involved and maybe they'll be able to encourage uh, their children also. Right. That was my hope. I could have just shared the data. I couldn't get any stakeholders that were parents. I tried. That was my data and talked about things that all of you were pretty much familiar with. But then I started exploring the parent reports. And, and I like when I do these things for JSU, I like to think I could be a teacher leader and promote those things that I think are good for us to really use next year. So Jeannie, we're here together and we're in fifth grade and we'll look at those parent reports and we'll see if that makes a difference. And then that'll help me with another class with action research. Um, well, I, I do EL, when I do EL parent meetings, I show them uh, where they rank as far as percentage wise yes. on math and um, on reading, right. for, but I don't show them, I mean, I'm talking about for the iReady when they take the iReady test, but I, I, I haven't really gone into more uh, sharing of data on that, but if we can come up with something, I mean, I'll be glad to include that when we have our EL parent meetings. And you know, I have like 60 of those and they're back to back to back for about three days. Okay, well, that would be great. And so you can kind of ban our tasks to do that, which will go with the task force I ask you to be on. Um, we're, we're addressing the problem of improving vocabulary and using more strategies for improving vocabulary. So, uh, and that's also some of the data we can show them is uh, where they are on vocabulary and maybe share uh, some things that can help, they can do with their child to help them improve their vocabulary. Exactly. Those reports have a section on that. So that would be great. Okay, on to the next slide. The next steps is to use the Diagnostic One data in the fall of 2021 to provide instruction in areas of need. And um, judging by what our data meeting showed that fourth grade data looked like, again, vocabulary was the, the biggest weakness. And um, also they we want to include more reading in the content areas and using reading strategies in the content areas. So. Um, our instructional partner had talked to us about that and any way we can help some of those content area teachers that aren't familiar with teaching reading strategies, that would be great. Um, and then another step would be to share the iReady information with stakeholders, especially parents. Sorry about that. So <clears throat> stakeholders include anyone in the community or board members, uh, our Pirate Foundation, anybody that owns a business that's concerned about education. So um, maybe there could, we could be a way that we could include other stakeholders too, to let them know that we have this program and how hard we work to uh, provide gains and achievement for our students. But we especially wanna use those parent reports. And I found a quote, I think it's the second quote I found in a presentation by Robert John Meehan. I'm gonna have to look him up, not just looking for quotes, but, it said, if your actions in the classroom inspire children to achieve more, question more, and dream more, you are indeed worthy of the title teacher. And that's what we want is to inspire the children to achieve more. And I didn't show data, but Jeannie, you probably feel the same way. I didn't show data on this type of student. I, we have some students sometimes that we know that they're capable of more. They just will not apply themselves to these tests that matter so much. And we'll see if we think they applied themselves to the high stakes test when we get our results back. But um, that's some strategies I'd like for us to work on too, is being very motivating and inspiring to children that just don't seem to want to achieve more. Um, and, and they come okay. with a lot of baggage. Sometimes Miss Duckett can attest to that, that uh, with the poverty and, and uh, 
we have a lot of students who she sees as a counselor with problems. And so sometimes it's hard for them to uh, apply themselves as much as they should. But I think we do a great job. We just need to keep searching for more ways to inspire them. Well, I know this year that probably an area that I didn't do as well that I usually do is, is talking to parents. I think we were just trying to survive and, um, it, it was an area that I, I lacked some this year and hopefully next year, you know, we'll be able to do a better job with uh, parental involvement. Yes. Yes. And Marty can help on that too. Ms. Duckett, you have anything you want to add? Can you hear me? We can hear yes. you. Okay, well, I really appreciate the three of you joining me and I hope I've provided something. It's June, it's early June and we're probably not ready to start thinking of, of these type of things right now, but I enjoyed putting it together um, and, and looking a little closer at it already and made me feel like maybe I should have been looking at it that closely in the past, but we, we do have a lot on our plate a lot of times, so. Sometimes it takes the summer to find these extra things that might be helpful. Well, I'm excited about the thought of sharing some of this data uh, okay, with the good. parents and being, more, and being more specific about um, why they're student is like at 5% or 1% or whatever percentage and be more specific and show, hey, uh, this is the area that your child needs um, more work on. And I think that could uh, increase the effectiveness of EL parent meetings. Right. Good. And I'll be glad to help you with that, Mr. Handley. Okay. Any, we'll any way on that. I'll oh. be happy to also. Okay. Well, thank you all for participating. And I will see you whenever I see you. June 16th for a few of us, I think. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Freeman. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Can't end it. <laughs> it won't end. There we go.